Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 163 in the series of basic math, and today we'll do lesson number 13 on the top out of uh, in the series of 15 videos on the topic of absolute value inequalities. Absolute value inequalities. Except the problem that we see on the blackboard does not involve any absolute value. It's, it's an ordinary inequality. Right here is the ordinary inequality. We are told that 2 minus 5p, 2 minus 5p has to be greater than 4p minus 3 divided by 2. And the question is, which of the following graph applies? Which of the following five graph satisfies this inequality? And here the answer choices. There are five answer choices, obviously. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Here are the zeros. Here are the zeros. These are all zeros. Answer choice A depicts some 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 negative quantity, and x is has to be. So what the answer choice A says is that not x rather. I meant to say p. Answer choice A depicts a situation that p is some is some is more than some negative quantity. P is something more is more than some negative quantity. That's what it shows. P is more than some negative quantity. Answer choice B says that P has to be less than some positive quantity. The value of the P is, is something less than some positive quantity. Less than, is, is less than some positive quantity. Answer choice C says that it has to be between some negative and positive quantity. It has to be between some negative and a positive quantity. There are no numbers here. These are, these are generic graphs. There are no numbers here. Do you understand? And it's not these numbers. These lines are not drawn to scale. And then here we have a situation that it is it is more than some positive quantity. The value of the p has to be something more than a positive quantity. And here finally we have it, the value of the p is either is either less than some negative quantity or more than some positive quantity. One of these five graphs, one of these five graphs will apply to this inequality. Our job is to identify which one it is. What I want you to do at this point is to pause the video, solve the problem yourself. Once you have done so, we'll compare your work against the work that you and I will do, will do together in a five seconds time. I'll get out of your way. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. All right. A problem some similar to this one, very similar to this one, is something that we did yesterday, day number 12 out of 15, on day number 162. If you have not watched yesterday's video, day 162, and if you are having trouble doing this problem, watch day 162 and then try to redo this one on your own. You will get more out of it. On, the, on yesterday, on day 162, we learned that the very first thing we want to do is get rid of this, this denominator from the bottom. The only way we can get rid of this denominator in the bottom is to multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 2. The problem is that, when we multiply or divide an inequality, we learned yesterday that if we, we learned yesterday on day number 162, we learned that if we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, then we have to remember to switch the direction of the inequality. Otherwise, the inequality will not hold. For example, for example, we know that 3 is less than 4. Of course, 3 is less than 4. If we were to multiply both sides of the inequality by, by 2, it still holds. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 is less than 6 is less than 8. Of course, it still holds. It's fine. But instead of multiplying it by positive 2, had we multiplied it by a negative 2, had we multiplied by a negative 2, we would have got a negative 6 and a negative 8, and negative 6, negative 6 is no longer less than positive negative 8. Negative 6 now is more than negative 8. The direction of the inequality needs to be switched if you multiply by a negative number. If you multiply an inequality, or if you divide an inequality, if you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, we have to remember to switch the direction of the inequality. For example, for example, we know we know that that four is less than five. Four is less than five. Well, let's let's do something simpler. How about four is less than six? Keep it simple. If you were to divide both inequality by two, that's still true. Two is less than three. Nobody's going to argue with that. But instead of dividing it by two, had we divided by negative two? We would have gotten here 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2, 
and here 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3 and negative 2 is now more than negative 3 it is no longer less it is more the direction of the inequality needs to be switched the negative 2 is now more than negative 3 as soon as, as soon as we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number we have to switch the direction immediately do it right away immediately so that you don't forget it do you understand that is the one main reason why people get these kind of questions wrong because they forget to switch the direction so let's do it enough of the talk let's do it we're going to multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative 2 multiply this side by, by, by negative 2 and multiply this side of the inequality by negative 2 and as soon as we multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 2 we're going to go here and switch the direction instead of less than we're going to say it's greater than you with me? the rest is very easy, the rest is very simple very straightforward nothing has changed yes the rest is very simple, very straightforward, we just have to do it out the rest is the rest is no different than solving an, an equation no different than that so negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be negative 4 negative 2 times the negative 5 is positive 10 positive 10 p has to be less than and this negative we cancel out with this negative 2 that was the whole point and we end up with 4p minus 3 the rest is downhill as we said bring the 4p to this side by subtracting 4p from both sides as you can see it's very straightforward positive 4p and a negative 4p is going to kill each other let's bring the 4 to that side add 4 to both sides add 4 here add 4 here negative 4 and positive 4 they're going to kill each other and we end up with positive 10p and a negative 6 negative 4p is going to give us 6p 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 has to be less than 6p has to be less than has to be less than negative 3 and a positive 1 which is positive 1 and therefore p has to be less than 1 sixth this is the solution this is the solution this is the solution to this given inequality now we have to identify a graph that goes with that, that scenario we have to identify a, a graph that depicts the situation that x has to be less than some positive quantity rather I keep calling it x I meant to say p p has to be less than some positive quantity what that positive quantity is doesn't matter because there are no numbers here this is very generic these are very generic graphs I look at a positive quantity and then p has to be less than that here's a positive quantity right here there is a positive quantity and p has to be less than that that's your answer correct answer is b the answer to this question is b it's right there it's a positive quantity like p has to be some p has to be less than some positive quantity p has to be to the left of the positive quantity technically speaking because it does not have an equal sign I made a mistake here well it, actually I just fixed it I was about to say because it does not have an equal sign I should have put open circles here everywhere I should have all of these circles should have been open instead of erasing everything instead of making all of this circle open I'm just going to fix it I'm going to find a quick solution I'm just going to insert an equal sign so now it's okay because it is less than or equal to because it is less than or equal to the circle is closed it includes that value so that value right you see there is one sixth it's positive one sixth so p has to be either equal to or less than positive one sixth all the way through there is no limitation it has to it has to be to the left of one sixth and that's that i'll see you tomorrow okay bye now